You know, Chef is a movie that explores both the negative and positive sides of, of social media. How much of that came from your own experiences? Well, you know, I think our generation is the generation that remembers life before Twitter and now sees the world and what's changed after it. And we've seen a lot of good things happen, and we've seen a lot of people make their lives very complicated. And every time, and I've been on Twitter for about five years, so I'm very careful every time I get on there. And I'm, you know, there's often cautionary tales about what happens if you're too emotional, had too much to drink, uh, think you're being funny or sarcastic. It just, there's a whole different language that I think our kids' generation understands better than we do. Right, and you sometimes pay the price for a negative tweet, but in the case of your film, Chef, there have been so many positive tweets, a lot of momentum. I mean, shout-outs from Anthony Bourdain and Elon Musk and Dane Cook yeah. and Larry King, Joe Jonas, the list goes on. What does that do for a small film like this? Well, that, this is a bit of an experiment to see if social media really has as much relevance as, as the marketplace seems to think. Uh, right now, traditional marketing where you just dump hundreds of millions of dollars into commercials uh, still seems to rule the day. And you see these huge weekends that are dictated by very big marketing machines. And I've, and I've been on the other side of this. I've been part of that, you know, a film that has had that kind of push behind it. But the question now becomes, can a word-of-mouth film that's well-reviewed and touches a specific audience and touches them in a very sincere way uh, without a big marketing push behind it, without one billboard, can the word of mouth spread thanks to social media? And what's happening is this film has bubbled up from, from two cities to, to 70 screens to 500 screens and now over 1,000 screens, and this is all thanks to social media. I know you encouraged Robert Downey to join Twitter, uh, and that has sparked some fun tweets from the set of the new Avengers film. Uh, yeah. When it comes to using social media, what's the difference between how it ends up being used for a film like Chef and how it gets used by big studios? Well, I think big studios, the, it's just a little bit of a, it's like nuts on top of a Sunday. I mean, it would, it, it's fine to have it, but it would work without it, too. Uh, a film like Chef or uh, a pop-up restaurant or a food truck or an art gallery opening or a stand-up comedian, those, that size of an audience uh, and the independent film world uh, really is impacted by social media. A peer-to-peer -peer recommendation holds a lot more weight than a commercial that tells you how great a movie is. Well, speaking of peers, we mentioned Elon Musk. Uh, he's a friend, obviously, in the case of the Iron yeah. Man film. He was part of the inspiration for the Tony Stark character. Just out of curiosity, is he, is he an investor in Chef? Well, he's not an investor in Chef, but he's a guy that I've, I've uh, become friends with through the course of working on Iron Man. Iron Man 2, we actually filmed at SpaceX, which nobody really heard about yet. Now it's a now everybody knows about SpaceX, but if you look at Iron Man Two, Justin Hammer's like evil monster. weapons factory was uh, was SpaceX. Tesla also that. is an example of a company that has benefited from social media. Um, yeah. All the positive press surrounding them has enabled them to, for example, avoid doing things like doing their own TV spots. I would yeah. love to know if you would ever have any interest in directing a TV commercial for Tesla at some for point. For Tesla, yeah, I'm a Tesla driver. I signed up. I, I put my name on the list because Elon was a friend and he was nice enough to let us uh, film at his factory for free. He did a cameo for us and I said, oh, he's making a car. Let me sign up for his little car. Let me let me make the guy feel good. <laughs> and, and then uh, I was one of the first people to get one and it turned out to be car of the year. It's amazing. I sold my other car. I thought it would be like a second car and I, I haven't looked back. It's an amazing product and I would definitely do a, I would definitely uh, not just endorse it here as a, as a consumer but also I would do a commercial for him any day. I think it's changing the industry in a good way. Well, speaking of new technology, uh, right now we know there is a push in Hollywood to get FAA approval for the use of drones in productions and films. What do you think about all that? What do you think about drones and films? The use of technology to help, uh, to help keep a set safe is, uh, is a good thing. So whether it's having a digital double, uh, a digital double for a, a very dangerous stunt, so you're not putting a human in harm's way, or if you could eliminate the use of helicopters in precarious situation and replace it with a, a very controlled situation with a remote control vehicle, I think it could be good. I think it's worth exploring. A radio controlled drone, especially as the technology gets better, is something that could be used in place of that and allow for much more dynamic filmmaking. So I think it's definitely worth controlling. Your career progression in part is because of the different things that you learned on the different films that you've done um, and, and 
You've got Chef right now, but you're going to be moving right back to a big production with Disney's Jungle yeah. Book. What are some of the things that you have even learned on this project, on Chef, that you can take with you to your next project? I realize how much fun I had and, and how much the audience seems to enjoy what my tastes are and the things that make me laugh and make me feel good I, I'm, I'm seeing in the audiences that they feel good too and when you go through a studio development process it's very very easy to lose track of that it becomes a big committee it becomes a lot of people but if you really speak from the heart and do something really wonderful and sincere I think it's refreshing in the marketplace and and if you could it's nice to carry that sensibility into the big movies and I think when we made Iron Man just the cast that we put together and the and the tone of that film was the same tone I would use in the independent film and the same type of comedy I would use and the same type of casting. And the tone of Iron Man ended up being something that, although offbeat, was successful and now there's a whole Marvel universe that's consistent with what we did on the first film. So I guess the, the lesson I take away is don't lose your sense of instinct, don't lose your gut sense of, of what plays and what doesn't, and don't rely on statistical analysis or a, a big machine to compile data to help inform your your creative process it's great insight one final question a little known john favreau fact before your film career you worked at bear stearns briefly yes what yes. was that like well i was facilities planning so i wasn't it wasn't like i was uh running around with my yellow tie yelling bye bye sell sell <laughs> i was the guy <laughs> if your air conditioner wasn't working you'd call my department and i'd run over and and tell everybody it's gonna it's gonna get fixed immediately uh, it was an interesting moment, though. It was the time when it, uh, Bear Stearns was moving from 55 Water Street up to 245 Park. And so it went. It, uh, the industry was moving from Wall Street up to the banking uh, center, and it was, it was a bit of a transitional period. And I was there, actually, for uh, the crash. So I got to see, I got a really good bird's eye view that definitely felt a little bit eerie and familiar when I was doing uh, Wolf of Wall Street last year. And it was set, uh, the beginning of the film was set in that time period, and I remember distinctly what it felt like.